Number 10, Zorn Jean Grey. There is something really hot about the power and determination that is this more hardened, powerful, and post-apocalyptic version of Jean. After there was retconned to be fake Magneto Zorn and Zorn's twin brother Zorn, there was Jean Zorn. This version of Jean wears Zorn's containment helmet not to hide anything about her identity, but to help contain and control her powers, which she claims have continued to get stronger and stronger, which I suppose would make them harder to control. As proven when we see just how much it takes to stand against her. And in the end, it's actually her own power that is her undoing. It's not only her power that makes her sexy here, but for some reason, her getup has always seemed really sexy to me. Something about wrappings and chains that is just super alluring in a sort of rugged way. Or maybe in a sort of goth way? I don't know. I know I like it. That's what I know. Number nine, cats. In this alternate universe of Earth 79596, Catherine Pride goes by the name Cat. She ends up joining Emma Frost's Hellions, and her powers actually surpass that of her main 616 counterpart in terms of abilities. She gains the ability to actually not just pass through someone, but inhabit their body and possess them without damaging their mind. Kat ends up with the Exiles after finding out that the Shadow King has been possessing her universe's Emma Frost and attempting to escape, somehow becoming displaced in reality and time. Number eight, Colonel Carol Danvers slash Captain Marvel. Who doesn't love a woman in uniform? This version of Carol existed on Doctor Doom's battle world of Earth 31333. Carol served as the leader of the Banshee Squadron on Doom's battle world, where she was in charge of her own squad of pilots. Usually, she preferred to fly just by herself without a plane. This version of Carol is often seen wearing a military uniform. She was also one of the few bright enough to see through Doctor Doom's patched together world and wonder what else might be beyond those stars. The suspicions of her and her squad got her wondering which led her to getting into trouble. The miniseries ends with her squad and the Thor Corp getting into a huge fight and Carol having to face off against this alternate version of her once biggest and youngest fan, Kit Runner, who is now all grown up and serving the Thor Corps. This version of Captain Marvel is bold, strong, courageous, and adventurous. All of the things that we have come to love about Carol. Number seven, Dictator Hope. Dictators are not normally the type of people I think of when I think of sexy, but Hope makes being a dictator look surprisingly good. She has not just a look of power about her, but also a look of ruthlessness. I mean, I think to become a dictator at all, you kind of need to be ruthless. In the potential future belonging to Earth 12164, Hope finds herself supreme ruler of planet Earth after she uses her mutant ability to tap into the powers of all mutants on the planet at once. She also activates the ability of every new mutant so that she might also use their powers and exert control over them. This version of her is one that exists in a reality that Mutant Zero has envisioned. So it's like a fantasy reality, I guess. But like a bad fantasy. Nightmare reality. I just love how he imagines her as this tough looking warlord and how good she looks wearing tons of armor with her wild hair. Number six, Black Magic. This alternate version of magic comes to us from Earth 161. She is a villainous version of magic's Ilyana Rasputin, who kind of has a Madeline Pryor look to her. This version of Ilyana has glowing eyes and wears a lot of purple. She has tight pants on with long gloves and a long purple cape that is also kind of part of her top. Her ears also appear pointed here, like elf ears. In this reality, she is manipulated by the villain Cossack into becoming more powerful and more evil. Whether it's her dark child persona or black magic, Ilyana looks pretty good when she is being bad. Number five, Amy Comey Power Girl. This version of Power Girl comes to us from the Amy Comey universe. She ends up in a relationship with a very lucky Jimmy Olsen. This version of Power Girl ends up deciding to found the Justice League with Wonder Woman. She is often drawn more cutesy looking than her standard self and wears a more futuristic looking version of her outfit, accompanied by white boots or sneakers, sneaker boots. It's a thing. This outfit has more than one cutout and comes with arm gauntlets, as well as what looks like thigh high stockings, but they could also be armor made of the same material as her gauntlets, as they both have the same sheen. Number four, Ultimate Storm. This version of Storm wore many different looks over the years, but of course looked stunning in all of them. Whether she is sporting a crop top and her long ponytail, or her hair flying free with cutouts on her tight shiny pants, or has her hair cut short while sporting a crop top or bikini top, Storm as always looks the part of a goddess. Sometimes looking like more of a badass goddess than others, but always truly being a badass at heart. Number three, 
Black Queen. This version of Kitty Pride comes to us from Earth 1298. In this reality, after Storm was kidnapped by Dracula and transformed into a vampire, Kitty was sent on a mission to defeat this villainous version of Storm. Kitty failed her mission and was forced to become Storm's servant. Eventually, she escaped and ended up running into Sebastian Shaw, who made her the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club. A look I never thought I'd see Kitty wear, but not one that I hate by any means. Kitty looks good in red, don't get me wrong, but she also looks really good in black too. Number two, Amy Comey, Wonder Woman. There is something really sexy about a long loincloth. This version of Wonder Woman just has a really stunning and eye-catching costume that we need to pay tribute to. This version of Wonder Woman also comes to us from the Amy Comey universe. Here, Wonder Woman fights in an armored corset with her lasso of truth fastened to the bottom of her corset and still hanging at her hip. She fights in a long loincloth with undergarments underneath. Of course. Her corset is red and gold, while her loincloth is the familiar star bespeckled blue pattern. Her shield here is actually attached to her arm, which I just love the look of. It also just seems super practical. And she usually can be seen fighting with a big sword in hand. I am also super in love with these boots that she is wearing, which I think look stunning on her, even though heels are not usually practical to fight in. But I'm sure Wonder Woman could do it. I feel like she could do anything. Number one, Swimsuit Special Rogue. In the 90s, swimwear was all the rage, with shows like Baywatch infiltrating homes and television sets and making everyone fantasize about the ideal bikini bods and the type of people and characters they'd like to see in swimwear. Needless to say, Marvel also decided to hop on this trend and release their own Marvel Swimsuit Specials. Issue number two of the Marvel Swimsuit Specials features the deadly and dangerous Rogue, especially deadly in her bikini, as at the time she had little control of her life energy zapping, power draining, memory stealing powers. Rogue advertises an adventure filled vacation to the Savage Lands on the cover, which is unsurprising as I feel like her Savage Lands look with her torn, tattered uniform is known for being one of her hottest. I'm not surprised that Rogue would be like, by the way, remember the Savage Lands? I looked so good but also it's kind of a terrible time for me. Number 10, Star Woman. This version of Stargirl is known as Star Woman and comes to us from Earth 33. Courtney Whitmore in this alternate universe is a magic user wielding a staff that allows her to channel the power of the stars. She was the apprentice of Starman and fought to avenge his death. This version of Courtney looks like a mashup of Black Cat and Stargirl somewhat. She has white hair, a black mask, and wears a black and red long sleeve crop top with stars on it, red gloves, and black shorts. Crop tops for the win! I'm a big fan of the crop top. Can't wait for summer so everyone can wear crop tops. Number nine, the most dangerous woman in all of Europe. Is there a time period that exists that does not look good on Natasha? In the 1602 universe, Natasha Romanov, AKA Black Widow, is known as the most dangerous woman in all of Europe and is a freelance spy, not loyal to any particular country. She ends up aligned with Dr. Doom's alternate, Count Otto von Doom, in the 1602 alternate universe of Earth 311, which also ends ends up resulting in her death when she questions orders given to her and Doom's plan. Number eight, Vampy. If you are a fan of Vampirella and also a fan of futuristic, potentially cyberpunk looks, then I have a hot alternate for you. Anarchy Studios published a comic series in the early 2000s, introducing an alternate version of Vampirella from the future. The series was named after Vampirella's nickname, Vampy. This Vampy sought to cure her vampirism and ran around in a zipped up red leotard, thigh highs, with a a holster slash garter attached to keep them up, and red boots or futuristic kind of looking sneakers on her feet. She also had a gold chain style choker and arm bracelets and red gauntlets. This was a pretty epic look for Vampy and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love it. I also love the sometimes futuristic sneakers that she wore. I need a pair of those. She still sported her signature golden bat symbol as well in this version, which I think is the symbol of Draculon? Pretty sure. Number seven, Dark Supergirl. This version of Supergirl was created when Lex Luthor exposed Supergirl to black kryptonite. She was a duplicate of the original, but inverted morally, being more evil and dark than her original counterpart. She also appears to have a much shorter skirt. I guess shorter skirts are more evil than longer skirts? At least according to comic book artists and uh, 
black kryptonite race. This version of Supergirl was able to handily take out most of the Justice League members, including The Flash. In the end, she was taken down by Wonder Woman and her lasso of truth. Wonder Woman had managed to bind Supergirl and Dark Supergirl together in an effort to find out who was who, as Dark Supergirl had managed to force Supergirl into swapping outfits with her. She did a really, really fast quick change. Being bound together by the magical lasso caused the two beings to merge once more and become one entity. However, Dark Supergirl's persona would continue to live on inside Kara zor for some time, representing her darker half, which I also kind of love. I kind of love that she just has like a dark half, so there's like good Supergirl, slightly evil Supergirl, and they both kind of live within her. Number six, Jenna and Madeline Pryor. These two were obviously alternates who took inspiration from Jean Grey and Madeline Pryor on Earth 616 but were more or less their own characters. Madeline, or Madeline, and Jenna both resided in Limbo, and Madeline was preparing her sister to inherit the powers of the Phoenix Sword, a blade that grants its user power similar to that of the Phoenix Force from Earth 616. Madeline herself stole the blade from the Shadow King. These two are a couple of the raciest alternates I've ever come across. They are wearing metal bikinis, if you can call it that, that look like they got stuck onto them somehow. I don't know how they're staying on. I don't know. Magic. Art. Number five, Mistress Mary. Even her name is hotter than the original. This version of Mary Marvel comes to us from JLA Classified. She is tough as nails, kicks Guy Gardner's butt, and has an amazingly badass costume to boot. This version of Mary keeps her hair back in an all business ponytail, wears long dark gloves, a bodysuit complete with a lightning bolt window. In some panels, it appears to be a sort of see through plasticky yellow, and in others, it's just a cut out shape in her costume. Her bodysuit attaches to fish nets or stockings with one strap just sort of flapping free. And my favorite part, she wears a big pair of combat boots. All the better to kick butt with. Number four, DC EU Mara. Probably one of the hottest versions of Mera in the entire DC universe comes to us from the DCEU films. I personally don't think the Aquaman film would have been as successful without Mera in it. Amber Heard was the actress who played Mera in the film and she did an amazing job looking and acting the part. Very well cast. Add in all the stunning costumes and outfits that we see Mera in and it's easy to understand why her DCEU version is considered one of the hottest alternates around. Seriously, the sight of Amber Amber Heard's Mara in that stunning jellyfish dress is enough to make anyone swoon. Pretty sure everyone watching that was just like, I'm weak in the knees. Do whatever she wants, please. She's just so pretty. And let's also not forget just how badass Mara was in the film. You know, smart she was. She's just all over. She's the whole package, really. Of hotness. Mary, of course, doesn't always play the role of the hero, but she has fought alongside Aquaman enough times that I think we can count her as one for the purpose of this list. Number three, Rachel Roth. This version of Raven comes to us from the world of the DC bombshells. I love this world. It's just so stylized. If I were ever to do a Raven cosplay, I think this is the one I'd most want to do. Also, if I were to ever visit like an alternate world, I think I'd want to visit the DC bombshells. This version of Raven became the mind-controlled pet of Joker's daughter. She ended up being saved, however, by Zatanna and Mary Marvel. Her costume in this universe consists of devil's horns, a corseted bodysuit, long matching gloves, fishnet stockings, and an off-the-shoulder cape with its standard jewel fastening. Overall, it's just an amazing look for Raven. I really, really like it. Number two, She-Thor. This version of Jennifer Walters' She-Hulk comes to us from the famous pages of Sensational She-Hulk issue number 50, where Jennifer is looking for a new writer for her comic after her writer died. In truth, the famous comic book writer John Byrne was not dead, but was leaving the series. And Jennifer herself in the comic had him tied up in her office's closet. She was just tired of him writing for her and she sought a new comic book writer. One of the pitches her character receives in the comic is the idea of a story where she herself is an alternate version of Thor, goddess of lightning and wielder of Mjolnir. She is the sensational She-Hulk. This version of She-Hulk sports a cape, a winged headpiece, and a metal bikini. Gotta say, I'm a fan of this mashup. Jennifer would make a great Norse goddess. However, she didn't go for this one. She didn't, She-Hulk didn't, wasn't too impressed with it. 
It's hard to impress She-Hulk. Number one, Manga Marvel Girl. Okay, so the Mangaverse definitely has one of the most random and hottest versions of Jean Grey ever. Mostly because of the drawing style, though, I think. Honestly, the Mangaverse just gets all the hottest versions of female superheroes, usually, and some of the male superheroes, too. This version of Jean usually keeps her hair pulled back in a green scrunchie. She wears a green and gold super crop bikini style top and arm warmers and a super shiny green pants. Alternatively, she can also be seen in a more classic but still anime version of her original costume. Short green skirt, big thigh-high yellow boots, and an off-the-shoulder shirt with a yellow collared harness. Number 10, Red Queen. This is an alternate version of Psylocke from Earth 811, the alternate universe belonging to Days of Future Past. In this reality, Psylocke became one of the baddies, and boy, does that look good on her. Psylocke ended up joining the Hellfire Club and becoming their Red Queen. She has dark painted nails, a sick cape, and some really awesome thigh-high boots that look like they might be built into her costume. I am a sucker for really nice thigh-high boots. She wears a metal bikini over a seemingly sheer red bodysuit. She also appears to wear war paint or have gotten an epic red face tattoo, one or the other. Wolverine ends up defeating this version of Psylocke and handing her over to her brother, Brian Braddock, aka Captain Britain, in hopes that he can help to redeem her. Number 9. Flashpoint Zatanna this version of Zatanna Zatara comes to us from the Flashpoint universe. In this reality, Zatanna looks like a hardcore biker chick. She has an arm sleeve tattoo and sports some very low-rise leather pants, and wears a leather vest over what appears to be a leather bikini top? Her hair is shorter, her nails are painted dark, and she wears a black choker. She also drives a motorcycle. Sadly, as badass as she looks in this reality, she still ends up defeated and dead after a fight with Enchantress. Number 8. Black Cat Clone Most video games featuring Black Cat do not disappoint when it comes to highlighting just how seductive Black Cat is, and the clone version of Felicia from the game Spider-Man Edge of Time is no exception. This version of Felicia is a clone created by Alchemax using the combined DNA of a few different people and creatures, including Felicia herself, cats, Tigra, and the Vanisher. This made Felicia even more powerful, which really only added to her allure as a character. This clone's version had improved fighting skills and could also teleport. And as always, she also has tons of great sexy lines in the game. Peter even admits that this version of Black Cat is better than the original, in his personal opinion. Number 7, Flashpoint Starfire. Not everyone may love the idea of Starfire being a villain, but you can't deny that being bad looks good on Starfire. In the Flashpoint timeline, Cory joined Wonder Woman's army as one of her female Furies. This version of Starfire features a similar look to her main timeline counterpart. She is one of those weird 90s looking face and hair pieces that I love so much. I don't know why I love them, because I feel like in reality they would really look terrible on people. She is also covered in a costume that defies logic, featuring just swirls of purple flame to cover her. And she is also wearing some seriously amazing thigh-high boots. In this reality, her and Dick Grayson end up against one another, and a trap that he lays results in her death. Number 6. Old Lady Frost In the Old Man Logan universe, Emma Frost makes an appearance looking like she hasn't aged a day. This is, of course, due to her telepathic abilities, which allow her to appear youthful and stunning in others' minds, even in her old age. The idea of eternal youth and beauty while also continuously getting wild wiser and smarter is not only super Emma Frost, but also just, I think, appealing to most people. And you might be wondering, what happens though when Emma is faced with a mind that she possibly can't manipulate with her powers? In the Old Man Logan universe, that will actually likely never happen, due to the fact that Emma Frost in this reality is known as being the most powerful telepath remaining on Earth. Number 5. Mangaverse Black Cat So I know that Black Cat isn't exactly a superhero all the time, and is more like DC's Catwoman, in the sense that she walks a fine line most days between being good and being bad. But if we are talking hottest female alternates, then she needs to get mentioned because she has some of the hottest female alternates. Black Cat also does tend to walk the road of being a hero more often than a villain as well, I would argue. Her mangaverse version is by far one of the hottest, just based on her costume alone. This version of Felicia from Mangaverse's Earth 2301 also seems to genuinely care more about Mary Jane than her 616 counterpart. She expressed concern for MJ's well-being, despite also competing with her for Peter's affection. Still, this reality almost implies more of a love triangle between the three of them than a straight competition for who gets Spider-Man. Number 4. 
Nubia. Nubia is the alternate Wonder Woman from Earth-23, the same Earth as Calvin Ellis' Superman. There are a few different versions that are super hot when it comes to Wonder Woman, who herself is just a stunner, and Nubia is definitely one of them. Not only is she as noble and good as her main continuity counterpart, working with her Earth's Justice League, but her costume is also killer. I personally especially love how strong she looks and love her sporting her metallic armored costume, complete with a silver metal chest piece slash belt with built-in abs. Nothing says sexy like silver metal abs. Number three, Red Cat. The Red Cat is sort of a hybrid of Black Widow and Felicia Hardy, or really more Nat and Black Cat's clothing and role, which gives us the Red Cat. Now, I don't know about you, but I personally think Natasha and Felicia are a couple of the hottest ladies in the Marvel Universe, so this one definitely had to make my cut. This reality warped version comes to us from the short four-part series Symbiote Spider-Man Alien Reality, and pits Peter Parker in the symbiote suit, Red Cat, and no longer Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange, against the new villainous Sorcerer Supreme, Hobgoblin. Number two, Revenant Storm. There are so many hot alternate versions of Storm out there. Even her anti-self, her mama dry or Revenant version is sexy. This version of Storm was brought out in Uncanny X-Force Volume 2 after the Revenants under leadership of their queen, Cassandra Nova, used a serum to revive the mama dry of the X-Force team members within them. Psylocke, Puck, and Storm within them. This version of Storm keeps her long white mane of hair but also sports horns on her headpiece. Her costume is similar to her original costume, but with lots of dangly fang accessories. She also has a body chain attached to part of her chest piece. I am such a sucker for darker takes on classic characters and body chains. Body chains are cool. Number one, Power Girl. So I'm not about to talk about Earth 2 Power Girl here because now that seems a little weird and wrong. Although many people think of Power Girl as an alternate version of Supergirl, she really is her own character. Now, of course, the continuity in DC can be very confusing because of all of the resets we've seen and had. But basically, just know that Earth 2, where Power Girl is from, is kind of like the home for the classic versions of superheroes. As established in 1961's Flash Volume 1, Issue 123. Like Jay Garrick's Flash, Alan Scott's Green Lantern, old Old school Batman and Superman, so to call Power Girl an alternate doesn't really do her justice. Which is why I'm going to talk here about one of her own hottest alternates from the series, Justice League The Nail. Power Girl is one of the hottest characters in the comic book world, so of course I could not leave her out of this list. This alternate version has a similar look to Power Girl when it comes to her costume and aesthetic, but with just a few little alterations making her costume a touch more racy. Now I have always love Power Girl's look because I feel like she is just so unashamed of her body, of what others think of the way that she dresses. That confidence that she exudes makes her one of the most sexy and attractive supers out there. Nothing looks sexier on a person than confidence.